Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam picks up where he left off last week. He shows you how to install a guest operating system inside VirtualBox. Wow, are we really about to run two operating systems at once? Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to start up VirtualBox. And remember from last week, we went through the settings and how to create this. If you haven't already seen that video, you should probably watch that video to see how you get everything prepped for VirtualBox. Also, you need to understand and be able to download an ISO image of your distribution of choice. So if you haven't seen any of those videos or you don't understand that part, uh, watch those videos. Um, you can watch the Ubuntu one, which is providing the link below just to get an idea of how to do that. So once you have your ISO image, we're going to click Start. Now, um, at this point, it'll tell you the host key is defined as right control. I'll explain that more later on, um, but you can just say OK for now. And at this point, I've, I, haven't, um, uh, decide, I haven't chosen where this is going to boot up from. So uh, no big deal. Just go to Devices, CD, DVD, Devices. Now, yours may automatically choose a virtual CD, DVD desk file. Um, if it hasn't and you see this message, what you're going to do is then you're going to uh, go up to Devices and um, get into this um, choose a virtual CD, DVD disk file. And then we are going to go where we saved uh, your ISO image. So uh, for this video demonstration, I'm just going to use the Ubuntu 11.10. I think 12.04 is out at this point. If you want, you can use that. You're going to click Open. Okay, and then when you go up to Devices, you should see that the, the, the uh, Ubuntu uh, 11.10 desktop ISO image is attached. So what we need to do is we need to reset the machine. Say Reset. And now it should boot right from uh, the ISO image. So just click OK. OK, at this point, we are basically just reading this as a live CD. So if you want, you could just try Ubuntu without even installing it. I'm going to click that for now, but we are going to go through the install Ubuntu process uh, to your virtual uh, disk. OK, and then at this point, we should be booted into Ubuntu and whatever version of Ubuntu you decided to try out. So. Um, what you'll notice is if I maximize this in Windows, it's still very, very small. We're going to fix that after the install. Uh, you'll also notice that um, we have the little install Ubuntu icon right there. So what we're going to do is we are going to double click that and this will get the installing going for uh, inside of our virtual box. OK, pick whatever language you want. I am using English, so click continue. At this point, if you want, you can download updates while installing. I recommend checking it. For this demo, I wanted to go a little bit quicker, so I am not going to check that. Uh, definitely install uh, third-party software. Uh, this will allow you to watch uh, Flash video, I believe, um, and listen to MP3s and all that other good stuff. Uh, for the demo, I am not going to check that, but you'll definitely want that checked. I just want this to go a little bit quicker. Click Continue. So for this example, we're just going to say erase disk and install Ubuntu. It'll only do this to your virtual box. You can see right here, this is actually our virtual box, 8.6 gigs. Remember, I did not select dynamic. I picked fixed, and it was around like um, 8 gigs. So that's fine. Click install now. All right, eventually you will come up to this. This is basically just saying where you are. This is for the clock and what time zone you're in. I'm in New York. It automatically detected that. If you wanted to select something different, you just pick kind of uh, your time zone. Uh, I'm going to pick New York. Say continue. Keyboard layout, uh, I just have the standard English US. So I'm going to click continue. OK, this is actually going to be important. My username, I'm just going to call it Adam. Your computer name, uh, Adam. Dot VB for VirtualBox, pick a username, Adam, then put in a password. Uh, more characters, the better. Uh, just for this example, I'm just using something short. Um, <clears throat> require my password to log in. I recommend doing that. Uh, at this point, if you want to encrypt your home folder, you could also do that. If you want, you could set in login automatically. Uh, I don't know. Um, if it, It's up to you. Uh, I, I prefer requiring a password to log in. Click Continue. At this point, it will install. Just wait for the install to go through its thing. Okay, and once that's finally done, you should get to this uh, little um, <clears throat> thing that says ins installation complete. I'm going to click continue testing. Now, the reason I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to shut down my system, or, or my VirtualBox, I should say, and that will clear out all the memory that's associated with VirtualBox because the install takes up a tremendous amount of memory. So I'm just going to say shut down. Yes, of course, I want to shut down. 
And at this point, it'll say, please remove installation media and close the tray, if any, because it thinks we actually installed from a disk. So just click enter, and then you'll be right back to the main screen. Now I'm just going to close out VirtualBox, and that should clean up all the memory that was used during the installation. Okay, and once you get back to this point, we're going to start up VirtualBox again, and then we're just going to start the, our, uh, the Ubuntu uh, OS. And then at this point, uh, again, you're going to get these warning messages. Um, if you want to get rid of them, just click Do Not Show Again if they bother you. Okay, at this point, you should be brought into the, uh, the login screen. So remember, I didn't have it automatically start up. Uh, just type in your password and then click Enter. Now, right off the bat, you can see that this is kind of an issue, right? I mean, Ubuntu, the, the operating system is not taking up my full screen. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, we can install the guest editions uh, from, uh, from our hard drive. Uh, VirtualBox comes bundled with this. Um, I do believe in a minute we can go to restricted drivers and we can install the guest editions that way. Now, from using this in the past, what I believe happens is that the guest uh, the guest stuff um, uh, is actually installed at the kernel itself. So I, I believe, or at least this has happened to me in the past, if you update your kernel, then you may have to reinstall the guest editions, but it's not really that big of a deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the little dash home button here, and I'm going to look for some additional drivers. So I'm going to click that. And then, yes, as I said, um, this is the VirtualBox uh, guest editions. What this will allow you to do is do some fancy stuff with integrated to the desktop. Uh, it'll allow you to do full screen. Uh, it'll do a whole bunch of cool stuff. So all I'm going to do is click Activate. And of course, you need to supply your password. And then it'll download and install the driver. So just let that complete it do it and do its thing. Now, in order to activate uh, this graphics driver to get what you want, uh, all you have to do is log out. And now, just log in again, and what should happen is um, it should automatically resize to whatever your window is. So I'm going to click Maximize, and you can see Ubuntu did what it was supposed to do. Now I'm in full-size mode, which is fantastic. Okay, that's pretty much it. You have a full-blown uh, operating system installed. Uh, should work just like a normal operating system would or the normal Ubuntu install. Things may feel a little bit slower, obviously, as already stated, because you're running two operating systems at once. But what I'd like to do next is I would like to actually go through uh, how to manipulate a lot of these things So uh, within the virtual box. So for example, if you go up to view, you see we have switch to full screen, switch to seamless, switch to scale mode. And I just want to go through and, and explain what all this means. We also have uh, machine uh, disabled mouse integration. So what the mouse integration means is like I, I for example have two uh, monitors in my computer um, and so basically everything goes between the two operating systems. So if I go up here I can run stuff in Windows and then when I go here I'm automatically back into the operating system. Um, if I disable that then I actually have to hit a button to get back into my host operating system. So for example, I will disable that for a second. So now, um, once I am in here, capture, okay, so this is just telling me, um, I can't, you can see I'm trying to, well, maybe you can see I'm trying to move my mouse up and I cannot hit my start menu. So I'd actually have to hit uh, down here, it says um, right control. So once I hit right control, uh, now I'm into the main operating system. Um, and then when I hit this again it'll say capture so I like the integration so I'm going to go back up and disable so now I am right back into normal mouse mode which is the way I prefer it so if you go up to view uh, we can switch to full screen mode again you can hit uh, the right control on your keyboard because down here it says right control and we can hit right control F and then we can say switch. Again, if you want those boxes to go away, just check them to not go back up. And you can see I'm in full screen mode, so it doesn't even appear that I have another operating system underneath. So that's very, very convenient. Um, if you want, when you go down here, uh, by default, this is uh, how you can change uh, and get back into that, uh, or the different settings. And you can see here, virtual screen one. So. Um, I actually have dual monitors. Um, if I wanted this on my other monitor, I would just click Use Host Screen 1, and it'll automatically go to my other screen. So if you have two monitors, um, this is how you decide which monitor you want the uh, virtual box to be 
to be displayed upon. So I'm going to get out of full screen mode. And um, if you want, I'll show you uh, seamless mode. Uh, this is actually kind of cool. Um, what this does is this puts uh, Ubuntu... Um, uh, actually, it doesn't work quite as well with Ubuntu and Unity, um, but uh, I guess this will work decent enough. So uh, you see we have the taskbar and I have my other operating system. So for example, if I bring up a web browser, um, I'm kind of moving it around within my operating system. So it basically, basically what seamless mode does is it merges the two operating systems into one. So in order to get out of that, you can go up uh, again, you can go down here and just go to view, or if you want the hotkey, just hit control L and it'll automatically get out of that for you. So if you're having kind of display issues and you want it to auto resize the guest display, you can click this. And uh, sometimes this will happen when you are, are resizing. Uh, see right here, it, it, if you want, you can try to auto resize the guest. And then now it'll fit everything within this little square. So, um, you know, this, this especially works when you're scaling down. Um, sometimes VirtualBox doesn't automatically update it properly. So that's how you would update it. Uh, you would either hit this auto resize or you would hit uh, right control and G. So that's it. That's a quick navigation of uh, VirtualBox. And um, you know, feel free to play around with it and do as much stuff as you can within uh, the, uh, the operating system. Um, if you ever need to take a snapshot of where you are, try out different software, you can do that. If you ever need to reinstall the operating system, you can easily do that. This is a wonderful way to test out uh, different types of operating systems and become familiar with them. As always, thanks for watching. And be sure to check out my website, greenhornlinux.com. Catch you later.